All right, we're live. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of MSATP TV. I'm Bill Feely, the Executive Director, and joining me this morning is Julie Weaver with MCEE, which is Maryland Council on Economic Education. So good morning, Julie. Good morning, Bill, and good morning to all your members out there. I'm so pleased to be here with you today. Oh, well, thank you. We're glad to have you. And I understand you have a little presentation you wanted to show us this morning? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't mind indulging me, oh, I know no. many of your members are have supported us for a long time. And so I thought I'd just um, give a little bit of information on what's going on with with CEE and um, feel free to ask questions. I want this to be interactive and not okay. just a boring sort of board member presentation. So, OK, I'm going to share my screen. All right. And, um, we can talk through some of these uh, slide points. Um, just for reference, um, again, my name is Julie Weaver, and this is my um, email address. And I love to hear from members of the community and our supporters. So if you um, have thoughts you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear them. So feel free to shoot me an email. And also, I'd love for you to visit our website. Um, so that you can see a little bit more about um, what we're doing. And we have lots of videos on there that I think really help share the story of how we're impacting students in the K through 12 education space in Maryland um, through the student programs that we do and the teacher training that we offer. Moving on to the next slide, let's see if I can get this to advance. There we go. Um, if you don't know the Maryland Council on Economic Education, I just wanted to give, you know, just a little bit of a quick overview about what we actually do and how we serve the community at large. Um, we're, our organization is almost 65 years old, and we are devoted to helping students leave school really equipped to manage their financial lives and decision making. Um, we want them to learn all the things that I know that you want your clients to learn and um, be well-informed about everything from credit and theft and um, how to manage their money and how to invest for their future. All of these things that I'm sure you all spend a lot of time educating your clients on as well. And we really do three key things. We actually educate teachers um, on this, the financial literacy standards and, and economic standards that are actually within the school curriculum. We partner with teachers to provide engaging student programs where kids really apply the knowledge because we feel that we wanna see long-term behavioral change and that's how you really move the needle on capability. So that's something that's very important and MSATP has been a long-term supporter of that. And then we also try to communicate what's happening around the state to interested people about um, where, we're, where we're seeing financial education expand um, in our classrooms. So, um, and you can see um, through the work that we do, which is 100% free thanks to our, our sponsors, including Towson University, um, we're doing our best to really try to influence kids to have a better life and to make the most of the opportunities that are available to them. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, this is just gives you a little flavor of our student programs. The stock market game bill, I think, is probably the one that you all are most familiar with. And I, I think even some MSATP members have actually played themselves to get a feel for how it works and have a little inter-member fun, if I, yep. if I recall. Is that true? That is correct. Uh, yes. We've, we've done it for a couple of years. We didn't do it this year, but uh, we would like to get started back again because it is a blast and uh, set up a healthy competition among ourselves. Yeah, and, and we start this program with kids as young as fourth grade. And wow. it's really amazing what they can do and how well thought out some of their investment choices are. So um, we're working with the stock market game in grades four through 12. Um, and it's been a wonderful vehicle to give kids and their families because they take it home a flavor for um, their future becoming investors and uh -huh. money for their future. 
Right. There's also the personal finance challenge competition, which we do with high school students who work in teams to um, answer questions and uh, respond to a case study on uh, personal finance topics. Our winner at the state level goes on to compete on behalf of Maryland at the national level. And our winner last year placed second in the oh, national wow. competition. Yeah, so that was very exciting. Um, that was a team from Howard County that um, that placed second, and we're we're hoping to take first place this year. Good so, deal. Um, the National Economics Challenge, similarly, is a um, competition program for high school students around the knowledge about economics and economic concepts and and application. And the team from Mount Hebron High School in Howard County has not only won the state competition for three years in a row, but they have won the national competition three years in a row and have competed internationally. So it gives the kids opportunities to interact with kids um, from other countries, as well as really kind of understand what's happening in the news and why, it, why inflation is scary and what we should be concerned about as consumers and investors um, in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. um, and the, for the little kids, the poster contest is so much fun. I actually have a poster framed on the wall behind me um, where we ask elementary kids and middle school kids to draw pictures demonstrating their knowledge of different concepts. So um, that's a really fun Oh, no. Did, did we lose you? Bill, are you with me? Yep, here I am. Are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay, sorry about that. That's the the... It looks like you froze up. Well, I'm sorry about that. That's uh, quite all right. Live events are always unpredictable. Yes, they are. I think it was telling me I was talking too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, these are great engagement programs for, for kids, and we're excited to share them. And we'd love for all of your members, if they have kids or grandchildren that are in Maryland schools, to... Um, ask about whether these programs are being offered at their school and help us to expand into new places where we're not currently engaged. Okay. Um, our, our name involves economics and we spend a lot of time on personal finance, but we think of personal finance as applied economics because it all starts with the decisions that you make and the choices that you have before you. Um, this year we celebrated the very first Economic Education Month in October. Um, Governor Hogan um, actually made a proclamation, you can see it hanging on my wall, to uh, proclaim October as Economic Education Month. So we, we continue to focus on um, getting the word out about economics being important and for kids to learn economics as part of their K through 12 experience. Um, and I encourage you at home to if you, with your neighbors, your nieces, nephews, grandchildren, children, to point out economic choices and talk about the news and, and help engage kids in learning, learning economics for their future. Right. Um, one thing that I definitely wanted to talk about today because MSATP has been such a wonderful supporter of this program is the Maryland Financial Education and Capability Awards. And that is a program where a teacher from middle, high, and elementary are recognized each year for um, exemplary education in personal finance. So that is a wonderful opportunity to recognize our very tired and overworked teachers right now um, for the great job that they're doing in the school. Um, they receive a $1,000 cash prize plus recognition from the General Assembly. And the application process will be on our website and it'll be available in December. And 
anyone from the community can nominate a teacher, um, whether it be a teacher that is teaching um, someone in, in your life or whether it be someone that you know that you um, have worked with professionally or just are friends with and you know that they're working hard and doing great things. Um, MSATP has been a sponsor of this program in the past and um, we've been really grateful to partner on this. Um, Bill, I don't know, do you wanna share a little bit about the awards program last year and your, your thoughts on it? Well, I was quite impressed with the, um, with the program that you did last year. And uh, there was some students when they were talking about the um, teachers and everything and the amount of respect that the students had for the teachers was just incredible. And it's such a refreshing thing to see that because obviously on the news, all we hear about is the bad things that go on. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I realized that it's a whole lot more going on than that, but that's what you hear. So it was certainly um, a welcome breath of fresh air to, to see the respect that the kids had for their teachers. I couldn't agree more. I, I think they good news doesn't sell newspapers or get people's eyes on a screen. So right. no one wants to talk about the great things. Right. Um, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the exciting news from Montgomery County? Sure, absolutely. Um, another part of what we do is advocacy work, and, and that involves sort of spreading the news about expanding financial education. And in Maryland, we do not have a graduation requirement um, that students take a course in these critical life skills, um, which I think everyone thinks is important. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I think the State Department of Education feels that there are a lot of requirements already and they also respect local control of the local individual county school districts to make decisions for the students where they live. So at MCEE, we have been working closely in the counties, helping um, where there is an effort to get uh -huh. a graduation requirement in that county um, to move the needle there. And last year, we saw Prince George's County pass a graduation requirement for all incoming freshman students this year um, to take a half credit course in personal finance, which is terrific. Yes, um, it is. Yeah, it's one of the top uh, largest school systems in the nation. And now um, because of that, we're seeing a movement in Montgomery County. Um, and both movements were led by students and their families. They weren't led by elected officials. Um, so it was students and it is students who are coming to Board of Education meetings and telling the board members that they need this information. And so right now, the issue is before the Montgomery County Board of Education to pass a um, requirement that a course be offered in every school, because shockingly, they don't even have it as an optional course. Um, it's only in a very, very limited number of schools. Um, so even if you wanted to take it as an elective, it's not even available to you. Wow. So the first step is to make it available to everyone. And then the second step is to make it required, which um, there's a strong movement in that direction. Um, we're also, I listed Anne Arundel and Howard County here as well, because we're seeing a similar movement there as well. Um, it's not quite on the front burner right now because schools are facing a lot of issues, but um, it, there is expansion happening in both counties and probably there may be expansion in the county where your members live. On our website, we have a map that details where there is a requirement already in place. There is eight counties right now that have a requirement. Um, so if you're curious about whether it's required in your county or you want to get more actively involved, um, there's great information there. Um, and you can always contact me too to ask what's happening and, and how you can advocate if it's something that your members are passionate about. Sure, and, and our members would also be glad to volunteer to speak at some of the local schools, mm -hmm. um, you know, to help the, the teachers out getting the, the message across to the students about the value of the economic education. 
um, you know, it will help with your taxes and, and different things like that. So um, we would be glad to get speakers for you if, uh, if that's what your teachers would like. That's wonderful. And, and we do need speakers, particularly on complicated issues like taxes, um, to work with students. So I, I would love to do that, Bill, and we can follow up and um, perhaps survey some of your members to see who would like to speak in what areas they're in and help them get connected to a school close to them. Right. We'd love to. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, that's really, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because that's okay. really brief slides that I have. Um, in the time remaining, do you have other questions I can answer for you, Bill? Um, I guess one of the, the biggest questions that I have is the criteria that goes into the teacher of the award, teacher of the year award, mm -hmm. uh, other than being nominated by one of their peers or whatever, or a student, mm -hmm. what other requirements do they have for selection and, and how do you pick the teacher of the year award? Sure. I mean, there's some basic, um, you know, differentiators. You can have one within the last three years. Okay. So one thing. So um, we often see um, teachers nominated every year because they're just phenomenal. Um, but you can only win once every three years. Um, and honestly, um, it's it's the um, depth of the application that's and the nomination form that really uh -huh. is a differentiator. So if you know someone who's terrific, be be very detailed about why they're terrific because it's it it i think it gives more weight to their nomination if there's more specifics about what exactly makes them great versus just uh -huh. they're great right um, mm -hmm. well very good we look forward to working with you some more um i appreciate your time that you spent with us here today and um we hope to get the message out to everybody about the economic education across the state of Maryland. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you again. I know aside from our partnership, all of your members are locally doing things on their own and every little bit of effort helps because we really, it's great for our state um, and the future of our state to have our kids be well prepared to be informed citizens. Uh-huh. Well, we look forward to it, and uh, we know that you're doing a great job teaching the next generation of, uh, of our students and future leaders about economic education. So thank you very much for all your hard work at that. Thank you so much. Um, and I should mention, Giving Tuesday is coming up, so please you know, give to the organization of your choice if you want or you want to suggest to your clients that you support us or another organization working in this space. We'd really appreciate it. All right. Sounds great. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right.